Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and with the help of Phil here, we're going to install a Baxi Platinum combination boiler that comes with a Google Nest Thermostat E as part of a promotion offered by Mr. Central Heating. But this time, we have a blank canvas to work with. Rather than having to marry up to an existing system, we're going to start from scratch. The focus is now on improving the efficiency of the system as a whole and a highly efficient boiler that's installed to an inefficient system is not going to give your customer the kind of savings and comfort that they expect from a new boiler. Now one very simple and effective way to do this is to fit a Nest Thermostat E which is an ingenious piece of technology that provides greater control of that heating system by taking account of the variance such as the weather and the occupant's living patterns. For example, if the weather turns unexpectedly mild, the Nest Thermostat E will delay the start time of the central heating, but still manage to reach the target temperature by the time you require it. It can also link to your phone to determine whether you're home or you're on your way home because nobody wants to heat an empty house. And you can control it with the Nest app by voice command through your Google Assistant devices. Now once fitted, it complies with the requirements of the Boiler Plus legislation for new or replacement combination boilers. So as an installer, you're automatically complying with this legislation. And your customer can look forward to lower fuel bills and lower emissions. The Nest Thermostat is the perfect control for combination boilers and in this video you're going to find out why. So we're going to take you through the complete installation. Now this is a new utility room on an extension in this house and the first fixed pipe work has already been put in at the time of the build so hopefully it should all be there. On the incoming water supply, we're going to fit an IPS home protection unit, which is going to help prevent corrosion and it's totally maintenance free. Now this device is said to be 76% effective for removing the lime scale from the system. Now because everyone's having water meters fitted in this area, which have got a backflow prevention device, we've also got to make sure that we can accommodate any expansion in the water from the secondary heat exchanger. We're going to do that by fitting a small pressure vessel on the supply to the boiler. Now this GWS shock arrestor is perfect for the job. It takes very little space up and it helps to protect these ceramic cartridges in the shower and the taps and also prevent water hammer. Another neat device is this Amiga magnetic filter from Fernox and all boiler manufacturers recommend fitting one to keep that heat exchanger free from sludge. Now if you don't fit one and the boiler fails through contaminated water in the heat exchanger then the manufacturer's warranty will be null and void. So it's a small investment to keep the boiler and the system running as sweet as a nut. And of course you also have to add some corrosion inhibitor once you've flushed the system through, but this can be done through that Fernox filter. Now the reason I particularly like this Amiga filter is because it's one of the neatest ones out there. And one thing I've learned over the years is that customers don't want to see any pipe work. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that if you were going on to an existing installation and you might have a central flue hole there, you haven't got to recut that flue hole because this is slightly offset. They actually have a turret which has got an offset on it. So you could go back to the original hole if you needed to. But in this case, we were able to core that through from the outside, spot on, in place, hopefully. <laughs> The best way is just to slide them up on those rails, isn't it? Yeah, go on, mate. I'll put this boot over it. That's it, we're in. We are yeah. good. Stick that up there, yeah? Paste or TTFE, what do you normally use on your... Uh, I usually use PTFE, but I'm not worried either way. Right, I'm going to go and find a drill to drill that hole. Yeah. 
onto rotary <laughs> to stop the, the blowout. It should be 12 inches plus the blast ball, 12 and a half. Probably pre sold it. Where's the drain off? Here, mate. Put it out of the way. Here you go. Cheers. Save the Do dust. Do we that off? We're not worried. Dust. Yeah, no, always. Whoa. Yeah. Always. Always take this bit out because there's the rubber washer, there's the heat, there's the weep. I'm going to confess. The weep, comes, I haven't. the weep comes from the plumber and the fitting. <laughs> you might need to enlarge that hole slightly outside to get that. See what happens. How much do you want out? Just enough to. I like it to be fairly tight. Right way up, is it? Okay, Phil. Who's in there? What's that spinner that I lent you and you just stole? I'm surrounded by experts. So what I like about these is you can slip it over the pipe and you've got enough room in there to get to in those tight down. spaces. Yeah. yeah. When you've got two fixed ends and of course the other great thing is pre-bent couplings, isn't it? Very it's good. Back, yeah. Makes it very easy for us. To get Actually in. with this one they, they supply two different lengths. So if you're putting that filter in and you need a bit more standoff yep. from the wall, you can use the short one. Oh, okay. If you want it to go back clip distance. Use the longer one. Got oh, yeah. Bit of a worry because you end up with one left over. You think, where the hell does that go? <laughs> but so long as there's not water pouring out, you must have got something right, mustn't you? Everyone needs a bit of wiggle room. But I would have gone for the freebie. <laughs> you can't have it. The wall's perfect all the time, can you? Well, no, I know, but these cell phones are just difficult all the time, aren't they? This is just to ensure that there's no, that this valve is working correctly, there's no pressure going. And well, once I turn it off again, that there's no gas going up and into the meter when it shouldn't be. So what's happened is, we've gone to test the gas, and the back nut there wasn't tight. So I've put LDF, which is leak detector fluid, around the join, and there's gas seeping out, the leak detector will bubble up, which exposes the leak. So we've remedied that, we've tightened it up, and now we're gonna go and check. Same. So any little tips, Phil? Any plumbing hacks? Now it's time to install the Nest Thermostat E and everything you need to do that is contained in this box. But we do recommend that you have the customer there when you're doing this because you're going to need access to their Nest account, their home Wi-Fi and also their Bluetooth enabled phone or tablet. Start by using the Nest app to connect the customer's mobile device to their account. The app will actually guide you through every step of the installation. The customer's mobile device must be Bluetooth enabled to connect to the Nest Thermostat E. Now on an Android, that will happen automatically, but if it's an iOS device, you need to enable that. But also check that it's not in power saving mode or on airplane mode. Okay, so I'm gonna connect this Nest Thermostat E up to this power socket, plug it in just while we're setting up. And then once we're done, I'll put it somewhere more convenient. When it's powered up, it will connect to the Nest app. Now, if you've got another Nest product in your home, the Nest Thermostat E can use that 
to connect up to the Wi-Fi and the app. Now the Nest thermostat is paired to the customer's Nest app, we can connect the Heatlink E to the Nest thermostat E. Pull out the battery tab and remove the cover and make sure the Heatlink E's light is glowing blue. If it isn't, press the button to wake it up and scan the code with the app or type in the entry key which you find on the back of the wire cover. The app will then connect the Heatlink key to your thermostat and at this stage I recommend having the thermostat E and Heatlink key as close as possible to make sure they're communicating properly. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place this Heatlink E on the same side as our final position for the thermostat E. Now, this is just to make sure that the boiler isn't sitting between the two and blocking the signal. But in most cases, when you've got a boiler on an outside wall, everything is automatically to the other side of it. So you should be absolutely fine. So I've checked that that power is safely off and I can get on with wiring up that heat link key. If you've got surface mounted wiring, put this trim plate on now before you fit the heat link key. There are six terminals inside here and I've used the supplied labels to show where the common and the switched live connections go. These are no volt contacts which will switch up to 240 volt current up to 3 amps. The terminals are normally open so they make on calling for heat. Neutral isn't needed here so I can terminate this with one of the supplied terminal blocks and I'm going to put the other one on the earth. And now we can put the wire cover on and the fabric cover back on and turn on the power. And if you've got a programmer, you always need to set that to always heat or constant. The Nest app will test your thermostat's wireless connections to the heat link key. We now need to let the app know what type of system we have and the type of fuel it uses. So in this case, we're talking about a combi and we're talking about gas. Now your thermostat will start with a pre-programmed temperature schedule which can be changed with the app or the thermostat. And next you'll choose the eco temperature which is basically that setback temperature that your thermostat will use when nobody's at home. So when you're finished all you need to do is check that the thermostat is actually controlling the system and it will take a few days to learn the customer's preferences. But basically, you just turn it up and down like any other thermostat. When the green leaf lights up, it means that the set temperature is helping save energy, which is good for the environment and a nice visual way of telling the user when the heating is running efficiently. Now, monthly reports are emailed to the customer showing them their energy usage. So that's another Baxi install in the bag. And with over a million platinum boilers out there coming up for renewal, there's going to be plenty to keep us busy. Mm -hmm.